In this video, I'll tell you why I chose a class RV over other RVs, why I chose this specific RV I did, the Travado, and I'll answer the question I get most often, how much did I pay for this thing? What is going on YouTube and greetings from rural Missouri. Yep, I'm still in Missouri, still waiting on my license plates, but I should have them next week. And then I'm gonna hit the road. I'm heading to Colorado and then to the Tetons, then to Glacier National Forest, then over to Mount Rainier National Forest, and then I'm gonna shoot down to Crater Lake and not sure where I'm gonna go after that. So should be some really interesting videos coming up. So if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, so my last two RV videos have been doing pretty well. I have one with over 120,000 views and another with around 60,000 views. And I really appreciate everyone who's watching and subscribing. It's been amazing. One of the most common questions that I'm getting from viewers is why did I choose a Class B RV over other kinds of RVs? If you don't know, there are three classes of RVs. There's a class A RV that kind of looks like a Greyhound bus. Those are those really big RVs you see driving down the road. The next class of RV is a class B RV. And all that means is someone goes and gets a van and throws in a bunch of stuff that you would normally find in an RV in just the van. And after that is the class C RV. That's kind of a cross between a class A RV and a class B RV. It's the one you're probably most familiar with. And the fourth type of RV is travel trailers and fifth wheels and everything that kind of falls into that category. Those are the ones you see people towing down the road with another vehicle. Okay, so why did I choose a class B RV? To really understand why, I have to give you a Cliff Notes version of basically my life story. So I joined the US Navy at 19 years old and spent a huge portion of my life traveling the world on ships. When you live on a ship, you have a little bed that you sleep in, which is very similar to the bed on my class B RV. After I retired from the military, I went to law school, I became a corporate lawyer, I was working tons of hours and every night I would come home and I'd watch travel videos. I'd watch two genres of travel video. I'd watch international travel videos where digital nomads hop from country to country about every month. And I would watch RV videos. Two of the YouTube RV channels quickly became my favorite, We're the Russos and Story Chasing. You should go check out those channels. They're great van life channels, although We're the Russos have just transitioned into a truck travel trailer type of setup. Both Joe and Kate from We're the Russos and Amber from Story Chasing had Heimer Active Vans, and I fell in love with that van. I thought it was awesome, and I told myself, if I ever go and travel, I'm gonna get a van like that. Okay, so now the specific reasons why I was drawn to the Class B RV. The number one biggest reason is they're smaller. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I traveled the world with one backpack, one small 30 liter Osprey backpack. I am very much a minimalist and a class B RV lends itself to that lifestyle a little bit more than the bigger RVs. The second reason is it's easy to maneuver. No matter how you slice it, this is still a Ram ProMaster 3500 work van that was converted into an RV. It's still the same size as it was when it rolled off the assembly line at the Dodge plant. I can park in most standard parking spots and I can take it to places like New York and DC and not have to worry about taking it down narrow and congested roads. The third reason is it gets better gas mileage. My Travato back here will get 18 to 22 miles per gallon, which is awesome. And some of the Mercedes diesel versions get much better gas mileage. The next reason I chose a Class B and specifically a Dodge Ram ProMaster Class B is it's cheaper and easier to maintain. When you decide to start full-time RVing, there are three main costs associated with it. One is gas, the other is campgrounds and campsites, and the last is maintaining your vehicle. Mechanically, it's just cheaper to maintain and there are Dodge Chrysler service centers all over the United States. The next reason is a Class B RV has all the amenities of a bigger RV. It's just in a smaller package. And if you've watched my other videos, you know I prefer like studio size apartments. So I like everything in one room. And that's what you get when you have a Class B. Everything's in one room. My kitchen, my bathroom, my bedroom, everything. 
And finally, I wanted to be able to travel just about anywhere in the US, Canada, and Mexico and be able to bring my house with me. When you have a bigger vehicle, you're limited to where you can go and I wanted to have more flexibility. Okay, so the next question I get is why the Travado? And there are a bunch of different subcategories of questions that I'm gonna to try to answer right now. The first question is, why didn't you just build your own van or buy from a custom builder? As far as building it myself goes, unfortunately for me, I did not get that builder gene. I absolutely suck at that kind of stuff. I am terrible. The build quality would be awful. It's almost as bad as my cooking. I have nothing but respect for the people who build their own van. It's awesome. I love watching their channels. I love watching their process. That's just not something that I'd be good at. And so that's why I chose not to do it. Why not a custom builder or hire someone to build one for me? So I actually explored that option a lot. I had numerous conversations with private and commercial builders. The problem I had with that was time. The earliest I could get a vehicle was March 2021, and that just didn't work for me. And Winnebago had just dropped the National Park Edition Travato, which had almost everything I wanted in a custom build anyway. But more about that in a second. So that's why I didn't build or order a custom rig. Did I consider any other Class B RVs? Yep, I mentioned earlier that I followed Story Chasing and We're the Russos, and initially I fell in love with the Heimer Active. At the time, it had the best electronics package, and I loved the layout, I loved the European styling of the Heimer Active. That is the vehicle I was going to get. I actually almost bought a used Heimer Active. The deal fell through at the last minute because I had some um, liquidity problems. My money was tied up in some other things, so I couldn't get the cash right away. And I didn't want that person to have to wait on me to sell their vehicle. But things happened for a reason, and that led me to explore some of the Winnebago products. The first one that I was interested in was the Winnebago Rebel. It has a very similar layout to the Heimer. It has a cassette toilet. It has an induction cooktop. It has a bunch of the things I was looking for and it's built on the Mercedes chassis and it's also a four x four, which was awesome. But unfortunately, the lithium package inside the Revel wasn't gonna meet my needs. Okay, so that brings us to the Winnebago Travado 59 KL National Park Edition, which is what I purchased. I actually rediscovered the Travato. I was already familiar with the Travato, specifically the 59K floor plan. One of my favorite Instagrammers is a guy named Nick. He's also a retired military member and he's been traveling for like three years in his Winnebago Travato 59K. He puts out awesome content on Instagram. You should go check him out. So I really loved the Travato, but at the time there wasn't a good lithium option for it. About a month after my deal to buy the used Heimer Active fell through, I logged onto YouTube and in my suggested videos was a video by Fit RV. I'd been following them for a while. They have a standard Travato 59G, but in this video, they were trying out the Winnebago Travato 59KL National Park Edition this vehicle, but with yellow stripes instead of light gray stripes. Fit RV absolutely sold me on this vehicle. I fell in love with it. If Winnebago isn't giving them a commission on this thing, they should be because I bought this vehicle because of that video. Here's the specific reasons why I bought it. The National Park Edition Travato is like three of Winnebago's Class Bs all rolled up into one. It has the alloy wheels, the off-road tires, and the Sumo Springs, like the Winnebago Revel, it has the souped up 11,600 watt hour Volta power system like the Winnebago Bolt has. And finally, it has the K layout and the coolness factor that comes with the Travato. It also has two beds, which is really, really rare in such a small rig. Now friends and family can come on camping trips with me. For me, it was exactly what I was looking for, and if I would have built my RV, it's almost exactly what I would have built. All right, finally, we'll talk about how much this thing costs, and so many people are either really interested in that or like to kick me in the junk about it. If you get the exact same rig I have, which is the 59K National Park Edition with every single option, the awning style windows, the bike rack, the ladder, 
anything you can get on the Travato, I have it. If you get the exact same version I have, you can get it for around 120, maybe a little lower. The lowest I've seen is about 117. I know what you're saying. That's a lot of money and I don't disagree with that. I'm in a very fortunate position in my life where I can afford to get something like this. I'm extremely, extremely fortunate and I recognize that. If you wanted to get the standard lithium version of the Travato, that'll run you under 110. And if you don't care about the lithium, you're fine with running the generator. You can get the non-lithium version of the Travato for somewhere in the 80s. And of course, you can find used Travados, both the lithium version and the non-lithium version for much cheaper if that's the route you wanna go. You're probably not gonna be able to find the National Park Edition used yet. It's a brand new vehicle. They had a limited run. They only built it in 2020 and a few in 2021. So you're just not gonna be able to find it used at this point, or at least I haven't seen any. But in the future, you'll probably be able to find this exact same rig for a cheaper price. All right, so that's my video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, unless you're a big, big, big jerk and then you can give it a thumbs down. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I hit the road next week, and hopefully my next video will be from a different location. Take care.